Okay, I think we are live now. So let me quickly check uh, YouTube just to make sure whether streaming is happening without any issues. Just a check. Yep, I can see uh, it's streaming on YouTube and I see like 12 participants so far. Okay. Okay. Okay, all set. Okay, and let me share my uh, screen as well. Just a moment. Okay. So let me see how many participants are there. Yeah. So that we can get started. Yeah, I see like uh, 16 watching now. That's cool. That's a good number to get started. It is. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, like wherever you joined from. And welcome to Angular Online Meetup Group. And uh, so this is going to be the welcome. September uh, 2020 welcome. edition. So we are having this meetup from uh, March month of this year. And we had like different speakers from uh, different countries. And also we discussed on uh, different topics. And uh, today also we have uh, two amazing speakers with us. So I'll introduce them in a couple of minutes and how this meetup was started. So I, I need to give a background story before I, I get started with uh, my rest of the things. So when I started learning about Angular uh, like two years back, uh, the, as part of a migration project, uh, I, I had to learn Angular. And I had a bit difficulty in, uh, in finding the resources and other stuff at that time, like two years back. So then I decided, why don't I share the knowledge that I have on Angular with the rest of the world, even though we have so many blogs, uh, so many uh, video content, I wanted to be a part of this uh, community and sharing something useful to Angular uh, community. So that's why I started this meetup group. Uh, I have like two meetup groups, one for uh, US specifically, and the other one for rest of US. So that covers India and other part of the world. And uh, that's what Angular online meetup is. So it's going to be the online meetup forever, uh, even after the things uh, like Corona and other stuff uh, are done. Uh, we are going to have this as an online meetup so that anyone from any part of the world can join. And uh, as I already told you, this is going to be the September 2020 edition. And we have this event every month. And we usually have two speakers talking about two different uh, topics in Angular. Yeah, that's all the uh, quick background story of uh, this meetup group. So I need to talk about uh, our sponsor. Frontend.social. So they, they are our uh, sponsor. So a uh, big thanks to Frontend Social team. And I, if, if you just want to take a look what they are, uh, you can head to frontend.social uh, site where you can find uh, uh, like all the stuffs related to frontend uh, technologies like Angular, Vue, or uh, even React. So you will find everything related to that. And you can you can also find developers uh, on these technologies, work, I mean, working on these technologies from a different part of the uh, world. And uh, you will also find uh, some uh, interesting tweets uh, related to the uh, technologies here. And also you will find uh, what, what are the upcoming events and what are the jobs that are available in different uh, cities. You can find it here. Right. So just take a look and if possible, uh, enroll, uh, I mean, create a, a free account there so that it, you can be in the loop. So uh, coming back to my slide. Uh, 
Yeah. So before we get started, I just want to know about yourself. So in just go to YouTube uh, live comments and type your name, uh, city from where you join now, and how did you hear about us, right? So just share your name and city where you are join, joining from, and how did you, how did you hear about us, right? So this is kind of a, a quick introduction uh, uh, section between you and me. And once after you share your details, I'm going to share about me, right? So please go ahead and uh, uh, key in your information, uh, just just your name, uh, city, and uh, uh, how did you know about this meetup group, OK? So we can have, uh, I mean, you can take like a minute or two to just uh, key in your information here. OK, I see a couple of response. And let me read it over from my mobile. Hi, Ravindra. Hi, Ankit Kumar Sharma. Uh, hi, Baskaran Venkat. Hi, Naveen, Naveen Kaluva. And we have Gaurang Doda from Gujarat. That's, that's good. And we have Nimish Chain from Indoor. And Ravindra from Udaipur, Kishore Kumar from Chennai. That's cool. We have uh, participants from uh, different cities uh, from India. That's cool. Uh, how about others? Just go ahead and share your details. And if you want to say a quick hi to your friends over there, just do it. If you know any one of them already. And we have Sarvesh from New Delhi. Balaji from uh, Chennai and Krishna from Bangalore. Okay. Okay, that's good. Uh, Krishna no came to know about this meetup group through Twitter. And Kamal from Bangalore. Okay. And Karthik from Chennai. Okay, you found our group through meetup.com. That's cool. And we have Naveen from Dallas. Oh, we have audience from US as well. That's cool. And Mani Gandan from Madurai. That's nice. And Arun Kumar from Chennai. Yeah, and you came to, came to know about our group through Twitter. That's cool. OK, uh, oh, Arun Kumar who owns NG Chennai Meetup Group. OK. Hey, Pandian. Uh, from YouTube. Okay, that's cool. And Mohan Raj from Chennai. Okay, so we have uh, like 25 uh, participants right now. And we have Danny from Switzerland. Hey, Danny. And Madan from uh, Bangalore. Okay, that's cool. Okay, it's time to introduce about me. So I'm Uday. And I work for a, a bank here in USA. And uh, I have like uh, close to 11 years of experience in uh, the software industry. I worked on like different technologies before moving to Angular. Uh, basically, I was kind of a, a SQL developer in, in the beginning. And later, I moved to a backend developer, like creating APIs and other stuff. And now I'm into more of UI. And even now, uh, I mean, like a couple months back or a couple uh, a year back, I was into Angular. And now I'm into uh, React and dealing with uh, Adobe products, like Adobe Experience Manager. And that's really awesome. So I may come back to Angular again in another uh, month or two. And uh, yeah, that's all about me. And you can uh, find me on Twitter at the handle Ask Uday. A S K U D H A Y. Okay. You can find me there and just connect with me. And if you want to share something, go ahead and do it on DM. Or if you want to talk on our meetup groups, yes, you are very welcome. You can just share me that topic or title that you want to talk about. And we can set up a set up an event based on that. Okay. 
and let's uh, discuss about our uh, awesome speakers here right we, uh, we, we so far we discussed about uh, you and me and it's time to discuss about our speakers uh, so we have two amazing speakers here uh, nikita and uh, anket right N nikita is from uh, belarus and uh, thank you so much for nikita for accepting uh, uh, our invite and uh, he is a google developer expert and he is working as a, a software architect at uh, acquio company right and uh, thanks once again uh, nikita and we also have ankit with us uh, he is a full stack developer and uh, blogger and open source contributor and uh, you can you can find both of them on uh, uh, twitter I, i will share the twitter handles uh, in in the uh, talks in couple of minutes and uh, ankita uh, sorry nikita do you want to share something to our audience uh, quickly before we get started i think i'll uh, share as a start of my okay. presentation uh, yeah. a thank easier. you so much <laughs> and ankit i think you can also uh, i mean you, you also want to introduce yourself during your talk i believe right yeah sure yeah, yeah. let me go back to the schedule and this is what we have uh 5 to 5 5 uh, all the time what i mentioned here is based on uh, indian standard time ist and 5 to 5 5 welcome note i think we already uh, crossed 5 minutes that's fine and uh, following that we will have a talk on stop re reinventing the wheel uh, start using angular cdk right so nikita is going to talk about that and following that we'll have a simple quiz that checks your uh, uh like kind of a general knowledge and it also checks your uh, puzzle solving skill and uh, winners like three winners will get prizes there i will talk about that later and uh, following that we have another talk from ankit uh, so he is going to talk about uh, creating angular library and pushing that to npm right and finally uh, we will have a closing note and some announcements to share with the, our, our audience and that's all i have let me pass the ball to uh, nikita so uh, it's all yours nikita so i put your presentation on okay. stream yep. oh nice so cool thank you okay Again, hello everyone. My name is Nick. I'm from Belarus, um, and today I've prepared you kind of an Angular CDK crash course. I'll try to explain you the basics of the Angular CDK in 30 minutes. And uh, <clears throat> today I'll uh, talk about Angular CDK and about it its uh, major features. So, but before that, a bit of information about me. So yep, um, my name is Nick. As I told you, I'm working uh, at a company that's called Acquio. We are building lots of open source uh, projects uh, for Angular, like NGX Admin and Nebular. I hope uh, you heard about them. And um, also, I'm a Google Developer Expert for Angular and Web Technologies. And uh, here you can find my blog. It's uh, the how to make the software. Uh, there is my blog. A few information about me. Uh, also, you can find a number of talks uh, there. Also, right now uh, I'm creating an Angular CDK crash course. It's a set of videos where you can learn about Angular CDK features and how to use them in your projects. You can find the link to the course at my website at how to make that software. Also, here is my Twitter. It's at Nick Poltaraski. Uh, if you have any questions related to Angular, CDK, Angular, or web technologies in general, just don't hesitate. Uh, reach me at the Twitter, and uh, I hope I'll be able to help you. So today <clears throat> we will talk about uh, components development problems like about the problems that are appear every time we are doing some complex components then we will learn what is angular cdk and how it helps us to solve problems 
and we'll cover a number of um, the most basic features of the Angular CDK. Okay. So the first part is components development problems. What do I mean here? When we are creating different components like calendars, tappers, trees, or creating different behaviors like drag and drop or whatever, we are always facing lots of problems. What do I mean here? So first of all, it really might be hard to build because if you don't have really tens of years of experience in building software, it might be hard to build something, for instance, like a data grid. Okay, I'm not talking about the time here, but I'm talking uh, about a complexity. Okay, so you need to how to organize everything. You need to know the requirements. You need to, to know the ways the people will use your components. So it might be really hard to make something. It might require a number of iterations to build. So you need to build a data grid once, then learn something in the process and gather another requirements and rebuild it from scratch because uh, your requirements doesn't fit in the architecture you developed uh, at the start and so on. So it's maybe really complex. Okay. The second point, it might really take too long time to build big components like calendar or whatever. And from time to time, you don't have any time for that. Also, it might be hard to make it stable. Just <laughs> trust me, I've built a number of UI kits for different projects. And from time to time, it's really a big deal because you need to test every corner case. You need to try to understand the users of your components. I mean, not users of the applications, but uh, users of the components. Uh, it's about your teammates, about other developers that will use your components. And you need to understand how they will try to use your component and to make sure that components will work as intended. Also, so the, almost a few years ago and for now, from time to time, it might be really hard to share your components between projects. Just imagine, imagine the situation when you build a pretty cool calendar with where you can add events, where you can drag and drop them, and whatever, like Google Calendar, yeah? And you need to integrate that component into another project. How to make it? Just publish it on the NPM or just copy paste it or create an another solution. Both of them isn't like very cool for me. So what I want to say here is that creating com custom components from scratch, especially big components, complex components, is always painful and have tons of problems. So to solve all those problems, we have uh, two solutions. I mean, you can pick a library. It might be a new UI kit like Angular Material or another library, I don't know, Kendo, Nebular, or any other UI kit. Or you can pick a, an appropriate library to solve exactly your issue. Like you can pick a full calendar to solve the issues with a calendar and use it. Or you can use an AG grid to use it uh, to create data grids and so on. And the second solution is to use Angular CDK and build your components by yourself, but base them on the Angular CDK. So let's take a look at pros and cons of each solution. Just want to make it faster. So using the library. So I have a cons here just above the pros, just because there are more cons from my point of view. So first of all, using the library, it might be really hard to choose an appropriate one nowadays. Because nowadays on the NPM, we have millions of packages. And if you need, for instance, build a data grid, you will find hundreds of uh, packages with tables and data grids, and it may be really hard to choose an appropriate one. Also, it might be quite hard to customize the behavior, especially if you are creating um, <clears throat> a data grid. And for instance, you decided to pick a library that was built using plain JavaScript and has an Angular wrapper. Okay? In that case, it might be really hard to customize the behavior of that component since it don't have any a configuration for that. So in that case, it might be you'll have to write custom JavaScript and push something, and your teammates will hate you. That doesn't look very cool. 
Also, uh, as always, it's really hard to style. I face this situation almost each time I'm using any third party library, uh, component library, uh, because <clears throat> when you need to style it, it might be that a component has any appropriate interface for styles, but almost each third party library has hard coded styles and you need to create monster selectors that doesn't fit the screen and you're trying to make them bigger and bigger just to give them more weight to style your component. Or even they might have an important CSS that can't be overwritten just by you. So from time to time, styling uh, third-party libraries becomes a nightmare. Also, you can't be sure on quality of the library. Of course, if we are talking about Angular Material or other big UI kits built by other corporations, you may be sure on the quality of the library. But if we are talking about other libraries on the NPM, uh, we can't be sure because people are often publish different stuff on the NPM and we'll Google it, but people that didn't think that we'll use it in our projects. They just published for themselves or whatever. So it might be pretty tricky stuff. But here we have a pros, especially here. Using the library is really easy to start. So I think if you're building an MVP or whatever, something like that, so you don't need to really hardly customize the behavior and customize the styles, you can just download the library from the NPM, start using it as is, and everything will be amazing. So you can do it in a minute or even a second if you have a very fast internet to make a fast NPM install. OK. That's all what I want to say about using the library. So here are a few pros and cons about using Angular CDK. So here we have more pros and cons. But uh, the first point here is that uh, it's pretty easy to start with the Angular CDK. That's not easier than using a library, but it's really multiple times easier than building something from scratch. So Angular CDK is pretty easy and have pretty good documentation, so you can do it as a chart. Then, Angular CDK is easy to customize. Angular CDK almost have no style bundled inside, so you don't need to overwrite all the CSS provided by the library. So you can just pick the functionality from the Angular CDK and style it by yourself. It's very easy. And, uh, oh, OK, it was about the customization. Uh, I thought, OK, so it's easy to customize the styles, and it's easy to customize the behavior. When you're creating uh, something using Angular CDK, it provides very agile ways uh, to customize the behavior of all the components inside the Angular CDK. Also, you can be sure of the quality of everything bundled inside the Angular CDK. Just because Angular CDK is built and supported by the Angular team. So if you trust the quality of the Angular framework, you can trust the quality of the Angular CDK. OK. And the last point here is cause is that you still need to write a code. Yeah, You still need to install Angular CDK and write code manually. You can just take it, use it, and boom, everything's cool. You still need to code. OK, so what is Angular CDK? From my point of view, the best description of the Angular CDK is just a magic box that bundles inside a lot of useful stuff, a lot of cool functionalities that makes our lives better and easier. Another description I've prepared here is just says that Angular CDK is a set of tools and behavior primitives that allows building more robust Angular applications faster. So frankly speaking, it consists of more than 20 modules, as I remember. But I've covered uh, a few of them here, just to give you an overview of the Angular CDK functionalities. So first of all, it's accessibility utilities that helps you to build more accessible applications for everyone. And then it's drag and drop utilities that allows you to make different stuff with a drag and drop, like draggable dialogues, uh, lists, tables, and whatever. Clipboard utilities, viewport utilities, overlays. There's some models that allows you building uh, floating components like toasters, tooltips, dialogues, or whatever you can imagine. Scrolling utilities, 
stepper table and tree. Stepper table and tree are components. They're just um, Angular components built with a TypeScript, and they have almost no style, and you can just pick them style, and you will have your own amazingly styled components. And as harnesses, finally, it's a model that allows you to test everything you built using uh, Angular CDK and test it in a very cool and amazing way. So today we'll cover in a more detail three of the points, I mean, drag and drop, overlays, and tables. Why is this free? Just because, uh, as you remember, at the start of the talk, I told you about the Angular CDK crash course, um, creating a video course, and uh, I did a small like uh, investigation. I started a few polls, and people uh, voted for drag and drop overlays and tables more than for other features of the Angular CDK. So I can conclude that these three features are the most you know, useful <laughs> in the Angular CDK, and people use them the most. So <clears throat> in this talk, I have almost no slides more. Yep. Uh, but I have a lot of demos, and right now we will dive into demos, and I will show you what you can build easily in a few minutes using Angular CDK, and we will dive into the code and try to understand how does it work inside. So let's start with the drag and drop. OK, so here I have drag and drop demo. Uh, here's an application with my demos. It's published on the GitHub. So um, uh, the link will be at the end of the presentation. So you'll be able to check it after the talk if you decide to investigate it by yourself. So first of all, let's start with a simple drag and drop demo. We'll cover a few topics about drag and drop, then cover a few topics about overlays. Finally, we'll cover tables. So what do we have here? Here we have a pane and a rectangle, and I can drag it around the screen. Yeah, I know it uh, looks pretty useless, yeah, but uh, it's the first demo that uh, explains how easy it is to create a drag and drop using Angular CDK. So here is a rectangle, how to make it using Angular CDK. So first of all, I'm assuming that uh, you have an Angular CDK already installed uh, in your project. So you did Angular and you had Angular CDK. And here's a demo component. I have no code here. And I have a template where I have a plain deep drag me around with the text, what you just uh, saw on the screen. And it was class example box. And it's marked as a draggable element using CDK drag directive. Okay, and nothing more is here. So CDK drag directive is provided by the drag drop module. So just want to show you. Yep, in my app module, I have drag and drop module uh, imported in my application that's provided by the Angular CDK drag drop module. So you can import it and then use CDK drag directive on any HTML element, and it will become draggable. So something like that. If you can, if I check it here in the dev tools, you'll see that it's that div element with example box class, drag me around, and it's marked as a draggable using CDK drag directive. When I'm dragging, Angular CDK handles everything else. So that's the power where you can make an element draggable using one single line of code. Uh, hey, hey, Nick, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Okay. Uh, could, could you please uh, increase the text size if possible in your oh. ID? Um, ID? You mean yeah. here? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I think I can zoom everything here. Yeah. That, that's okay. Good. Yeah. Uh, okay. That, that's good now. Yeah. Thank you uh, so okay. much. Cool. So, yep. Uh, CDK drag. I hope you see that. There's one line. There's nothing complex is here. Nothing complex is here. I'll uh, zoom everything else later. So now we know how to make uh, the single HTML element draggable. And now it's time to make something more complex. I mean, do you remember any like applications like to-do lists? When you, I hope all of you are using to-do lists to manage your plans, manage your tasks. 
And uh, I hope you notice that one of the most popular features in to-do list is the ability to rearrange the tasks in the list. Yep, you can drag one and uh, move it up or down to prioritize them and so on. So how we can make such behavior using Angular CDK? So here I have a demo for reordering lists. Um, here I have a list of Star Wars episodes, and I can pick one item. It becomes floating and white space uh, below it. And then I can drag it, and you can see the beautiful animation, how I drag the element across the list. And finally, I can release the mouse somewhere, and it will be placed in that position. OK. But how to make it? Let's try to understand how does it work. So um, that's my second demo. So what do we have here? First of all, whoop. first of all, here I have a list of movies. So just a plain JavaScript array of strings, and we are rendering it on the screen later. Then what's most important here in the template of the component. Um, I have a div that renders my movies using ng4, and I mark each of the divs using CDK drag, exactly the same as we saw in the previous demo. But to make, um, to connect all the elements in one list, to let them know about each other, to let them know about each other's positions, so on, we are wrapping that. Uh, draggable items with CDK drop list directive, OK? That allows us to rearrange the data inside. But if we just wrap it with CDK drop list directive, we will not be able to rearrange the data source. We will not be able to rearrange the data inside the array. So we'll be able to rearrange it only on the screen. That's a pretty useless behavior. And that's why. We are adding CDK drop list dropped event, which we are listening and reacting when uh, the user releases a mouse and element dropped somewhere uh, in the list. Using that event, we are calling drop function that moves item in array. So what does it mean? It's a utility function provided by the Angular CDK that receives the movies array which means a data source of the draggable list, and receives the uh, two indexes, like uh, in the previous index of the item we picked and uh, moved somewhere, and a new index, yeah? And this function rearranges the data inside that array. So after that, we can send that array on the backhand, uh, or store it somewhere, or do whatever with it. So again, it rearranges the data here. Cool. Let's move on and take a look at another demo. Um, the last demo with the drag and drop. Uh, so here I have, again, to-do list. And, but here I have two lists, not only one list. And I want to create an application that will allow me to move the data between lists. Okay, So I can move everything here. And whoo, everything's done. I can fall asleep. Everything's cool. Or I can return something back. How will it work? How to make it using Angular CDK? So return here. Oh, OK, another good. OK. So here I have two lists, like to do array and done array with a few strings, exactly the same as in the previous demo. But in the template, I have a more interesting picture. So again, I have a div that is CDK drop marked as a CDK drop list, uh, exactly as we see, and uh, ng4 on divs with CDK drag, exactly as we see before. So we are creating a, drag, a list of draggable elements. And again, we are listening for drop event to handle moving elements between lists. But in our new situation, we need to uh, let that least to know about each other to allow us to move items between them and to transfer items between these two arrays. How we can make it? Here, we are marking that CDK drop list as to-do list and passing it 
in uh, the done items list. Yep. So we are telling that this list connected to this list. To do list is connected to done list. And a back uh, link here. So we have a done list marked as done list here. And then here we are connecting to do list to done list. So we are linking them. And then when we are calling a drop event, we know uh, which container we have. So here we are just handling the event. If the element was moved from one list to another list, yep, that means that the previous container doesn't equal to the container, to the new container. There's a new container it's moved somewhere else, not in that uh, list. In that case, we are calling a new function transfer array item. It receives a previous data, like uh, if we move item from to-do list to done list, then if we move from to-do list, it will be linked to the to-do array, and here it will be linked to the done array. And as in the previous example, previous index and a new index. But if we are moving items in the same container, we are doing exactly as in the previous demo, we are just rearranging data in this container using the same vitamin array function. OK, I hope now you start to feel the power of the Angular CDK because it's uh, only the start. Let's move on. What do we have next here? Next here, we have overlays. As I told you before, overlays are the functionalities, utilities, different, and so on that allow you to build your floating components. So if you need to build model dialogues, tooltips, toasters, bottom sheets like in Android or whatever, or any other floating components on the screen, you need Angular CDK overlays, definitely. So let's take a look on some examples. So here I have a dialogue demo. Uh, what do I have here? Here I have a button. I'm pressing the button. I'm getting the dialogue. Just, just like a plain dialogue. I hope you saw tons of di dialogues in your life. And here I have a close button. I can press on it, and the dialogue will be closed. Okay. How to make it using Angular CDK? So first of all, uh, you need to import an overlay model. So for drag and drop, we import drag and drop model. For overlays, we need overlay module. Nothing complex. Then, <clears throat> then here we have a bit more code, a bit more logic. So let's start with a template here. So how to make dialects using Angular CDK? First of all, you need a button that will call a show function that will show a dialog. OK. Uh, that's pretty easy. And also here I have an ng template that's marked as a dialog to allow us to inject it in the component's code. And some something, some uh, markup inside to make a beautiful but dialog and a close button inside. OK, everything's pretty easy. So let's return to the code. What do we have here? Here I'm injecting, first of all, I'm injecting a template uh, in the component to, because I want to render it on the screen using overlays. OK, so here I have a view child dialog. I'm reading the template wrap. Then in the show callback, that is called when I click the show button, what am I doing here? I'm calling this overlay.create. Overlay is a service that's provided by the Angular CDK, and it allows you to open uh, just floating panels, any floating panels. It's pretty abstract. It's not related to any types of components, just can open uh, floating panels, nothing more. So it's imported from the Angular CDK, as I told you. Then inside, we're adding the backdrop, which has backdrop true. That means that uh, when I'm opening the dialog, I have this pretty beautiful background by default. And then we have magic. Uh, we are using a position strategy. It receives a position strategy. What is position strategy? Uh, in terms of Angular CDK overlays, position strategy is a object that uh, explains to the Angular CDK how to position your overlay on the screen. Uh, it has uh, Angular CDK provides us with 
two major position strategies. Yeah. The first one is global that is used right here. So it means that we are positioning an element globally on the screen. Also here we are centering it so vertically and horizontally to make it appear exactly at the center of the screen. Okay, but it has other useful configurations like uh, top, left, bottom, paddings, and so on. Uh, yeah, so it's the first position strategy, global position strategy. Also, it has a flexible connected to position strategy. We'll cover it uh, in the next demos. But right now, I can say that uh, this connect position strategy doesn't position an element globally on the screen. It connects it directly to some element. So it will be useful to create something like a tooltip because it's really connected to the element. It's not positioned globally on the screen. So here we are using global position strategy and centering the overlay right on the screen, uh, right in the center of the screen, and saving uh, that overlay in the reference, like an overlay reference, plain variable. Then we just created the overlay, but it doesn't have any content. Okay, we just uh, at the start. Uh, injected the dialog template ref in the component. And now we need to render the dialog uh, in the overlay, like render it inside. To make it, Angular CDK provides us with a concept of portals. You can imagine portals like, you know, like holes in the screen, like where you can embed any your component dynamically. And Angular CDK overlay is a portal and we can project any content inside. So here I'm using new template portal because I'm creating the portal using the template, yeah? So it's a template, I create a template uh, in the HTML file, injected it and using the template. Exactly the same way you can use component portal where you can pass not a template, but a component, it's, it will work. So when we have a portal, we can just attach it to the overlay and it will be rendered on the screen. Yep, using all these rules mentioned before. And boo, una, uh, now we have that overlay rendered on the screen. But when we need to close it, we're just calling this reference dispose and disposing closing the dialog. So again, I'll show you demo. Yep, so we're just pressing show, creating the overlay, creating the portal, and rendering uh, that uh, dialog template in the overlay. And when we are pressing close, we are just posing this overlay. And then we need to create it again. That's it. That's pretty easy way to create uh, your floating components. Let's take a look at one more demo using overlays. Here I have a demo with a tooltip. I bet almost every applications application have tooltips. So here is a tooltip demo. You can just let me zoom. Yep, that's plain tooltip. And when I'm hovering the element, it appears on the screen. When I'm removing files from the element, it hides. Okay, how to make it using Angular CDK overlays? Easy as that. Almost the same way as we did for uh, dialogues but we have a bit more code here. So again, let's start with a template. You have a button that's marked as a host. Again, we need to inject it in the component and a template for tooltip to render on the screen. Cool. Uh, let's to take a look on the code. We are injecting tooltip and the host in the component. And here in the ng on init, we are started to listen mouse enter and mouse leave events uh, on the host element. So host element is a, uh, is a button. So this button is a host element. We are starting to listen events when my mouse is over the button or leaves the button. Cool. When my mouse <coughs> will set up uh, the creation of the tooltip a bit later, but now we need to meet uh, <laughs> One more position strategy, as I told you, is called flexible connected to position strategy. So it allows us to connect our overlay to some element, not render it globally. So here we are using just that functionality to flexibly connect uh, an overlay to the host element here. And here we are adding positions. What does it mean? This object describes uh, which how to render overlay related to the host element. 
So render it above, below, the left, the right, uh, or where. So it's pretty, it might be really hard to understand. I spent a, <laughs> a few minutes when I tried to understand it the first time, but I'll try to explain it very fast. So here we have two properties that explain that overlay X, that we need to take the left side of the overlay and connect it to the right side of the host element, which means by X, overlay X. It's a uh, left part of the overlay, means that it ought to be connected to the right part of the host element. Cool. And here, you by the Y, uh, we need to center the element on this related to the host element. So these two props describe that we ought to position it to the right, and these two props describes that we ought to center it uh, vertically. Cool. Let's move on here. Here we have exactly the same situation as in the demo before. We are just listening for the enter event. Uh, and then we are creating the overlay. We are creating the portal here. And we are rendering the portal uh, in the overlay, exactly the same as in the demo before. And then we are subscribing to the mouse leave event. And uh, when uh, the user removes the mouse from the host element, we are removing the overlay. OK. So it's pretty easy to build. And I hope if you are not using Angular CDK by yourself for complex components, complex behaviors, I hope you'll start doing that. OK, cool. Um, what do we have next here? Here next, we have tables. Um, Tables are really popular stuff in almost every Angular application because you know, like our customers are really love tables. They love to explain data in tables, and especially they love to create tables with behaviors like sorting, filtering, or maybe I don't know, inline editing of tables and whatever. So. Here, I have a plain table. I don't want to show you all the powerful functionalities of, of the tables, because it will require more than an hour for me <laughs> to explain you all the functionalities of Angular CDK tables. So right now, here, I'll just show you how to be the, build a plain table with Angular CDK. And um, we'll say a few words on how to make it more powerful. So it's a plain table. As you can see, it's a plain uh, HTML table with table, T hat, T body, T error, T D, and T H in the header. I hope all of you already built tons of such tables. But how to make it in a cool way using Angular CDK? Uh, let me open the demo. So uh, it's pretty easy in the code. So here I have a data source. Data source is a is an array of objects like you know, any other table. I'm just defining my data here. Or in the Angular CDK tables, they can receive not only an array of objects, but they can receive an observable, for instance, if you need to update your data from time to time, like I don't know if you have a um, WebSocket and you're receiving data from the backend, you can easily put that observable right in the uh, Angular CDK table and render it dynamically. Everything will work as a chart. Also, I have a displayed columns array here. That array tells the Angular CDK how, oh, oh, pardon me, which columns to render on the screen. OK. The most important part here is table demo uh, component HTML. So it's a template. It might be a bit hard. Uh, OK. So what do we have here? Let's take a look one by one. So first of all, it's a table. It's a plain HTML table marked uh, as a CDK table using CDK table directive. OK. And here we are providing a data source for CDK table. Nothing complex. 
But when you need to define the structure of the table, it become, becomes a bit more complex from my point of view. So what do we have here, how it works? In Angular CDK tables, you're defining, first of all, your columns. Yep, as you can see here, it's position column. It will take column definition uh, that's called position. So when uh, Angular CDK uh, will render the position column, it will take this definition. When it will render the name column, it will take this definition, and so on. Inside the column definition, we add a describe how to render the header cell using CDK header cell definition directive. And we want to describe how to render CDK just a, oh, pardon me, just a row cell, a plain row cell. So here we are using CDK cell definition directive that allows us to refer to the element. Element here is a row, a row of the table. And we are picking a position property of the row. OK, because it's position column. In the name column definition, we are doing exactly the same, but we are telling that it will be a name as a header and a name in the cell, and so on and so forth for each of our four columns. Exactly the same with weight column and exactly the same with the symbol column. And finally, we add a describe how to render our rules. Because here we described our columns, we described cells in that columns like header cell and a row cell. But we didn't define how to render rows by themselves. So here we are using CDK header row directive to define the header row and CDK row directive to define the body row. Okay. And passing display columns here to tell Angular CDK table model how to uh, render your table, which columns to use for that. As you remember, we already defined the display counts here. OK, cool. So that allows us to render a count. So why it's cool, why it's powerful? Uh, what do, do I want to tell here you is that here we are configuring, uh, we have an ability to configure our table in a very agile way. We can pass any components inside. We can render something dynamically. We can do whatever we want and whatever we need. Uh, one of the most popular uh, examples of using Angular CDK tables is uh, Angular material tables. They are built uh, on top of the Angular CDK tables. Okay, And all the functionalities that are provided by material tables, like sorting, filtering, and line editing, or whatever, are built using Angular CDK tables. And you can do exactly the same if you need to pick only parts of the such functionalities. So you can just use Angular CDK table, add a bit of code, and everything will work as a charm. OK. Broken speaking, that's all about tables. but uh, I want to tell you a few more words and show a few more demos, but OK, I have a very few time. So uh, what I really like about Angular CDK is that uh, when I need to compose different functionalities, they work like a charm. For instance, um, maybe a month ago, I had a, a task when I had to build a table using just, just a plain table, OK, with sorting, filtering, whatever. And at the end, when I almost build the table, customers said, oh, OK, we need to rearrange rows in the table. And I said, OK, come on. How can I make it? And I understand that I can just compose different modules of the Angular CDK and create a table with uh, a re and rearrange data in it. OK, so I'll show it here. Um, exactly the same table built in exactly the same way as I showed you in the previous demo. But here I can take rows and rearrange them on the screen exactly as I, we did into the list and so on. So just to make you sure, it's a plain table, it's table, t body, t hat, rows, and so on. And I can rearrange it here. So yeah, it works very cool. It's really powerful stuff. Um, also, I have one more demo here. It's about overlays, draggable overlays. Yep, all my composition uh, demos are about drag and drop, just because everyone likes drag and drop. 
draggable overlay demo. Uh, that means that uh, I can create a dialog or any other overlay that will appear on the screen. It will be floating component, and let's make it really floating so I can drag it. How does it work? Exactly the same way as we discussed before. So we are just uh, composing the features we used. So here I'm doing exactly the same as I did in the uh, dialog uh, demo. We are again injecting, creating overlay, creating a portal, uh, assigning it to the overlay, disposing it on the close, and so on. Nothing complex as we did before, but uh, in the template, I'm using CDK drag directive. As I told you, only one line allows you to make draggable dialogs or uh, whatever, like draggable pictures on the screen. I hope uh, you will use it someday. And you can compose not only drag and drop with other features, you can compose almost any feature of the Angular CDK. So I hope you'll dive into it and you'll like it. Frankly speaking, that all for today from my side. Here are a few resources. Here is my Twitter. Uh, again, if you have any questions related to the Angular CDK, Angular, or WebDAV in general, don't hesitate, just reach me. Here is my blog, How to Make Dot Software. And demos are hosted as a GitHub, my account, Angular CDK Crash Course Talk. Just, I hope um, we'll publish our presentation. You'll be able to copy the link. And that's it, guys. Thank you for listening. Do you have any questions? Yeah, thanks, Nick. Uh, I mean, so that, that was kind of a deep dive into CDK. Thank you so much. And uh, can you share your GitLab, I mean, GitHub link uh, with oh. me? I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it on comments. Uh, sure, just give me a second. Yeah, the demo oh. along with the code. Mm. I can't open it here. Yeah, you can share it on YouTube okay. comments or yeah. It says uh, in the private chat. Yep, I, I got it. Uh, well, let me maybe sure on the Twitter link. Uh, okay, I'm sure it's my Twitter link. Maybe you can yeah. share it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I shared it already. Oh, OK. Yeah, sure, I can put it again, no problem. Yeah, so thanks once again. And we have a couple of questions from participants. Uh, let me put sure. it on a stream so that you can answer it right away. OK. Yeah. So can I drag and drop a row within a table? Will it get the same animate it gets for CDK drop list? Uh, yep. So, uh, as I showed it, just let me show it again. Uh, you can drag, you can configure your animations. Oh, just let me reload it. Uh, you can configure animations using plain CSS. So as mm -hmm. I told you before, Angular CDK have no styles by default. That's my my styles. And uh, when you're doing a drag and drop here, Angular CDK assigns an appropriate classes for elements that are dragging or that are uh, on other elements and so on. And you can reference those classes in the CSS and add appropriate transitions or whatever. So yeah, you can style almost everything here, even in table. OK. So moving on to the next question. I, I just put it on the stream. You can just read it out. OK, how do we store the drag and drop position data? Any utility that we could make use of? So drag and drop position data is stored inside the Angular CDK. If we are talking about positions of elements in the screen, then they are stored in your data source of the uh, CDK drop list. So as it uh, showed here, just 
Okay, so here's the list. We did a drag and drop with. And when uh, you're doing drag and drop, uh, it takes the positions from that list. But if you're talking about position uh, of just a floating element, you can again uh, listen for drag event uh, of that element uh, and store positions by yourself if you need that. That's it. Okay. So How moving on to the next one, yeah. Okay. How can consumer of our CDK component can change default style of component, which is the best way to allow custom styling option? Oh, it depends on many situations, frankly speaking. And for now, I can say that um, the best way to style something is it might be using the CSS uh, properties. This pretty powerful nowadays and uh, they're available in uh, most of the modern browsers so from my point of view it's the best way to style something so in that case your component just uh, uses some properties and the user of the component can override that properties and your component will become styled that's it easier than okay so next one is uh, again from Kishore. <laughs> Angular CDK for Ionic app. Yep. Uh, for some of the features, it might be useful, but uh, frankly speaking, I didn't use uh, Angular CDK for Ionic app because uh, I didn't write Ionic app in a multiple previous years. So I've tried Ionic maybe four years ago, and so that's it. But as I remember, Ionic had uh, its own uh, pretty good components for most of the features like tables, dialogues, and whatever. So I don't think it will be required for Ionic app. But from some, for some features, it may be useful, of course. OK. Okay, is it possible to add scoped styles on overly components, tooltip demo? Scoped styles, what do you mean? So um, I can say is that when you are creating um, an overlay, it has an appropriate styles here. Also, here is a CDK overlay dash no, uh, zero. As you can see as a dev tools, it has an ID that's assigned uh, to your component, to your overlay when you create it. Also, it has a class, and you can provide your own class here. So as I remember, when you create a tooltip, for instance, you can go into the template, and when you create, where's it create? Yeah, create it here. As I remember, uh, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah, I can set a panel class. So I can say some class here, and it will be added uh, by the Angular CDK to your element, and you will be able, what? Well, yep. Yeah, as you can see here is the right. I've added a some class, so you can uh, add styles to that class, and that's it. Okay. And I think uh, this is the last question we have. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay, so can we add nested tables and add a column to show or hide the nested table? Hmm. Um, frankly speaking, I never tried to do that, so I have no answer to a question, sir, man. But I think uh, it will not be a big deal to make it. Just try to make it and let me know will it work out. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and this is a response from Vignesh for uh, the Ionic question. Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, as I told you, as I told you yeah, Ionic has its pretty cool UI kit, so for most of the situations, you don't need Angular CDK. Yep. Okay, so what is the best way to start uh, to learn Angular CDK in depth? Mm, I don't think it's a good idea to start to learn in Angular CDK as is. Uh, I think the good idea is to just, if you need to build some complex component, just open Angular CDK documentation and check whether you can use it. 
as I said, if you can use it, use it. If you can't use it, then build something from scratch or Google for alternatives. So uh, I don't think uh, you need to learn it in depth. You, from my point of view, the best way is to just read through the documentation, just try to remember major modules of the Angular CDK, and just you just need to know that when you need it, you can go to the documentation and check how to make, how to solve your problems. Yeah, so documentation is the only solution. Yeah, oh, that's prefer. Mm, I bet it's the best way, yeah, to check the documentation. It's yeah. pretty good with tons of examples and exactly. with very good explanations, yeah. Yeah. So this is kind of an implementation question uh, Nimish asked. Drop uh, we, when we use drag and drop with in the table, we need to alter sequence so that we change it in database. So how to change sequence? Uh, again, uh, as I told you, let's take a look at the list example again. We are doing move item and array function. You now we are calling it on the drop event. Yep, so when a user, user releases the mouse and uh, some item moved from one position to another, here we have previous position, here we have new position, and we are rearranging the data in the diary. Then we can, I don't know, send to the back end of this array and store it on the back end. Okay, so you don't, uh, it's not, not that hard, you're just an rearranging the data in the array, and then you're just using that array with new data. That's it. Really easy. OK. Yeah. So this is kind of, again, uh, uh, implementation question. OK. State management for CDK, because a refresh will make him go to initial state. How do? Uh, I think I we can use, uh, we can store that state in database or something, right? Like. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is just a, a follow-up question to the previous question, kind of. Uh, what was the previous question? <laughs> so the uh, previous okay. question was like how to store it in the database. Uh, based uh, on yeah. the... OK, yeah, sure, you can start in the database and uh, load it from the database. Or you can store that, I don't know, in the local storage or whatever, where you need to store it. So you don't need uh, any actual state management for CDK. Since CDK, it's not uh, about state management. It's about only presenting your data, presenting uh, your data on the screen uh, and creating powerful UI. Yep. Uh, OK. Can we use CDK without utilities like move item and array, drag drop data? from tree no, to some containers. Uh, yep, sure, we can use CDK without that utilities, but mm, in that situation, you'll have to write them by yourself uh, because uh, another way it will just not work. If you're not rearranging the data uh, in the data source, then it will not uh, actually move. So you really need these utilities or you need to implement them by yourself. Yep. I think that's all uh, we have, and uh, a couple of thanks messages from uh, audience. Yeah, thank you guys uh, for wanted... having me. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, everyone, for participating in the question and answer session, and thank you so much, Nick, for uh, taking your time and joining with us. Yeah, and discussing you, some have uh, some stuff with us. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me again. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I already shared a, a GitHub code on uh, YouTube comments. And uh, how about the presentation? Uh, did you share the link for your presentation? Uh, I you have didn't it? share a link yet. Uh, I'll send it in a few minutes after the talk. Okay. 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 Thanks again, Nick. Uh, we'll have another interesting session like this in future on CDK okay. itself once it yeah. evolves more. Yeah. For me, uh, I had something around with the connection. Could you please repeat a question? Uh, sh sure. Uh, we can have a similar session in future on CDK. 
Um, okay, uh, I think we can discuss it <laughs> after that. Uh, I have uh, tons of the information to share about Angular CDK. Yeah, maybe not, maybe in future, like after a couple of months. Yep, sure. <laughs> Yeah, once after CDK uh, has more information, like new util new utilities and functionalities. Yep, uh, sure, but I just covered a few percent uh, of three mo modules of the Angular CDK, but it have more than 20 modules, so I have content for <laughs> multiple talks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's all. Uh, let's move on to the next section which is fun quiz okay. and uh, you can also join Nick if you have time uh, okay it's just okay uh, could you please uh, okay delete me from the translation and, yes uh, sure, I sure. I'm, I'm removing no. you <laughs> yeah yep okay let me put my screen on stream Okay, so the next item on our agenda is fun quiz. So uh, this is going to be a simple quiz on Kahoot. And uh, uh, Kahoot usually pick three winners, right? Uh, if you already played Kahoot quiz, you, you should know. Otherwise, I'll just give you a quick introduction about that. So uh, it will pick three winners. And first two winners will get JetBrains ID license. And the third winner will get uh, Amazon gift card worth $15 or 1000 INR, uh, whichever is applicable for you. And uh, the Amazon gift card is sponsored by Front End Social, and you can use it for uh, buying books or any, any other stuff related to your uh, learning, right? And JetBrains uh, ID license is from uh, JetBrains team, who is our uh, uh, community partner. And you can use the license to uh, install any uh, JetBrains software ID, basically not software ID. Like uh, they they have a popular IDs like uh, IntelliJ, WebStorm. So you can just download and use the uh, ID license for one year, right? It's free. So let's move on to the quest. So we have like nine questions here. You may need a pen and paper because I have like three puzzle questions you may need to solve it if you are good good at solving uh, i mean using your brain or using your mind that's fine otherwise if you need a pen and paper go ahead and grab it so
uh, hey guys sorry for the inconvenience so i was having internet uh, connectivity issues hope you are able to hey see guys. me now sorry for the can you confirm if you are able to see my screen now let me check the comments okay okay sorry once again uh, so from morning i have like a spotted internet connection not sure what's happening okay let's play this quiz So let me put my screen on stream once again. Okay. Hope you are able to see now. So just join the uh, Kahoot quiz. Uh, just go to kahoot.it and uh, enter this number. Okay, we have six players so far. Okay, so we'll start the quiz by 8.48 a.m., which is my local time. Okay, any more audience going to join? Okay, I think it's... We have enough audience now, it's time to start. So, uh, I mean, uh, Kahoot will show us a question on screen. And you need to choose option based on the uh, matching color, right? So, see, th this is how it works. It just shows the question. And following that, it will have four options. And uh, each will have a different color. Like each option will have a different color. And you need to choose color from your end. Okay? The color that matches the button. Okay, all set. I'll start the quiz. We have 21 players. So if you are still interested, you can join. So let me start. I think we have enough audience. Just choose your answer that matches the color of uh, the option. Cool, we have 17 answers so far. Okay, 22, I think 22 answers we got. Okay, it's whale. Okay, if you choose answer as elephant, giraffe, bear, that's fine. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So Ankit is on first position, that's good. In which year was the first iPhone released? Okay. 
Okay, we got 18 answers. Twenty-one. Okay, twenty-two. Twenty-three. Okay, it was uh, in the year two thousand seven. So. The first iPhone was released in 2007, right? So moving on to the next question, which may need a paper pen, as I said before. Okay, Nilesh is on top. Guess the missing number in the pattern. So it's not that tough or difficult. Okay, 13, 14, 15 answers. So just look at the number, first number and following the second number. So you can find a pattern there. Okay, so it is 329476. So nine is common in all the numbers and you can just choose that, this number. And a two three becomes three two and seven four becomes four seven and the number six repeats, right? Moving on to the next question. Where is the largest desert located? It's easy, it's easy uh, question, but don't Google it, okay? So 17 answers. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-one, twenty-two. We got twenty-one answers so far. So yeah, it's in Antarctica. Uh, the largest desert is in Antarctica. It's not in India and not even in Iraq. Okay. So I think, Kishore, you are going to get the license again. So moving on to the next question. Which superhero can climb up walls and buildings? Is that Shakti Man, Superman, Spider Man, Iron Man? It's pretty in easy question, right? It's Spider-Man. Yep. Okay, we got a we got a comment in uh, YouTube. Uh, so Vijay Kumar asked, I thought it's Angular Meetup. Yeah, it's Angular Meetup. Uh, but we have this fun quiz in between. 
so we have everything in 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 this bundle right we have talks fun quiz and uh, yeah sometimes we also have uh, guest participants as well yeah we have one more talk uh, following this quiz so stay tuned and i have some announcements at the end of this uh, session right so stay tuned and uh, connect with us so moving on to the next question guess the missing pattern sorry missing number in the pattern if 4827 is to 615 6283 So I can give you a clue here. Uh, do a simple addition between numbers. So we just got uh, two more questions. and after that we can uh, move on to the next talk from ankit okay it is 1017 so just add these numbers 4 plus 2 6 8 plus 7 15 and 6 plus 8 uh, 14 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 5 10 9 plus 8 17 right and moving on to the next question how many rings does olympic flag have this is again uh, one of the easiest question i believe okay i think it's one of the easiest question uh, in this quiz i believe okay it's five rings right and the next one is going to be again the toughest question a puzzle oh no uh, this is again a general knowledge question how many bones do sharks have i think it it's based on uh, how big it is right okay uh, we have couple of comments okay it's zero so sharks have zero bones right yeah even i i, I know like i mean I, i knew this yesterday evening okay let's move on to the next question Yeah this is kind of a tough first question which number is the odd one out or even i forgot the answer uh what it should be oh yeah so the clue is multiplication so apply multiplication between two numbers 
and find the pattern. Okay, it is six, five, eight, nine. Uh, the pattern goes like this. Eight, eight, one, six, two. Eight twos are 16. Two, one, eight, nine. Two nines are 18. Four, three, six, nine. Four nines are 36. And six, five, eight, nine. Six nines are 54. But we have 58 here. So that's the odd number. Okay, all set. We played all nine questions. Let's see who are the winners. Sanket is in number three. And Nimish, Nimish is in second position. And Kishore is in number one. And four or five are Manikantan and uh, Pratip, I believe. Right. Thanks, participants, for uh, playing this quiz. Uh, Please reach out to me on Twitter to get your uh, license or uh, Amazon gift card. Okay, so Ankit will get Amazon gift card. Kishore and uh, Nimesh, you both will get a uh, JetBrains license. Okay, and just reach out to me on Twitter to get to claim your prizes. And thanks once again for uh, others who played this quiz. Yeah, this is just a fun quiz to make ourselves uh, engaging. So going back, I'll put uh, Ankit on stream. Uh, hey, Ankit. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi, all. So we have Ankit with us. Uh, he's going to talk about uh, how to create Angular library and push that to NPM, right? So we usually pull li library from NPM. We do NPM install that will pull libraries. but I mean, we haven't done, we might have not done uh, push so far. Some might have done, but even I haven't tried so far. So I think I, I, I'm going to listen to his talk to learn how to create library and push it to Angular, sorry, NPM. So we have Ankit with us and he's going to give us a quick talk on that. And Ankit, uh, if you want to share your screen, go ahead and do yeah. it. Yeah. I'll put it on stream as well. I have shared my screen. Sure, I put it on screen. Let yep, me know if it's visible. Yes, it's visible, Ankit. You can go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, uh, great. Uh, thanks, uh, Uday, uh, for the, that amazing quiz. And thanks, Nick, for the amazing session. So in this talk, we'll be discussing on how we can create our own Angular library and how we can publish it to NPM. What are the steps you should take uh, uh, while creating an, your uh, Angular library? Okay, so this uh, this is a, a talk and then agenda of this talk is like, what is library? When you should create library and uh, when it is not required? We can uh, visualize, uh, see the concept visualization, uh, how we, uh, and we can develop it from the scratch. Uh, we, how we can test in the local environment, local project that we'll see. Also, what are the documentation you should write in your project when you are creating any open source project or open source library? What are the documentation you should uh, write? That guideline I'll show you uh, and how we can publish it to an NPM. So this is the agenda of talk. And before we start with uh, uh, how to create library and what is the library, let me introduce you myself. Uh, I'm Ankit Prajapati. Uh, I'm a full stack developer, open source contributor, and I'm a blogger. I do write blogs on ngdevelop.tech as well as on the C-Sharp corner. You can reach out to me at uh, Twitter or uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn profile, I'll share it at, uh, at the end. Uh, so you can reach out to me and then uh, we can discuss on Angular or JavaScript, uh, any technology if you require. So that is all about myself. So let's first discuss what is library. 
So we can say library is a collection of pre-compiled and reusable functions or files that can be shared in multiple applications. Uh, this, uh, this is not any standard definition. This is what uh, like uh, we can say in general words. Okay. And in terms of Angular, uh, we can say it is a collection of components, uh, services, directives, pipes, or modules. You can create your own components. Suppose you are uh, you want to uh, in your organization, you are following some uh, your own uh, design pattern, or you are for, uh, building your own uh, UI components. Then you can create the library for the same. If you are you want to create a like logging library for managing it in all the applications, then you can create. Uh, for the services library or you can uh, just create a uh, library for all the pipes which you are using in the multiple applications so for the reusable code and uh, what are the common components or common things you are using in the multiple application you can create it as a library and use it in a multiple application uh, the normal structure is like this. Suppose we have two applications and uh, uh, these applications have like uh, authentication service, logging service and other application one related service as well as rating component is there which, uh, and uh, this application one components, other uh, application one component. Same way we can have uh, another application, uh, application two which has some common services and some some are these application related services then what we can do here we can uh, create the library for the authentication uh, if your authentication part is same for the both the application then you can create your common authentication service where you can uh, uh, authentication library where you can uh, like the common guards or uh, interceptors or a service and you can just use that library in all the uh, your all the applications in your organization same way you can do with the logging service or logging you, uh, you can create your log own logging uh, service or lo uh, logging library and then you can use it in your multiple applications suppose you are uh, creating uh, some ui component or uh, uh, here it is a rating component then you can create its own library and then uh, uh, use it in multiple applications so with library the structure will be uh, like this uh, you can have separate libraries and you can it uh, use it in uh, multiple applications you uh, your code uh, will not be a redundant code also these are the pre-compiled libraries and uh, you can uh, like handle it uh, independently so uh, whatever library you are creating just focus on uh, that particular feature uh, don't combine more more uh, libraries or more features in the one library so that uh, you can uh, uh, use it whenever it is required uh, otherwise what happens if you are combining in one library uh, many functionalities then uh, when you are using that library in one application the some functionalities we, which is not required in our application that also will come so we can create a library based on our uh, like independent library it should be independent and uh, it should have its unique feature so such kind of library we can create so this is this will be the structure if you are uh, like creating a library and using it in your um, uh, angular application so whenever you need to update you just need to update it in the library or whenever you are creating new features it will be uh, just created in that library and that will be available to all the applications so this way you can uh, uh, structureize your uh, uh, projects in your organization or you can create your own library and publish it uh, so that other developers or uh, uh, you can uh, do the like open source contribution or you can do uh, create your own open source project so you can create this way your library so when you are creating your uh, own library then what are the things you should take care so your library should be platform independent so generally uh, your library should be working uh, almost all the like versions suppose you are creating angular library then it should work on like 9 or 10 whether it is uh, different and uh, also when uh, user is using webpack or system js then it should have uh, like files so that it work in all the platforms it should uh, like work in all the major platforms your library should be bundled and distributed so we can uh, here we i'll show you that how we can bundle it and how we can publish it on npm and we'll distribute it through npm pack uh, node packaging manager and then it uh, uh, it is a aot compilation ready so all that things will be done by uh, another library which angular provides ng package and angular cli uh, uh, with that we'll do i'll show you that things but this uh, your library should follow these things you doesn't have to like uh, uh, implement this thing manually uh, angular provides a way to implement it so don't worry about that and also you, uh, you 
it uh, it should be built in TypeScript so that it it is uh, it will be uh, like provides the type checking and all the uh, all things. So Angular uh, has uh, Angular team has specified the package format for distributing any library, any Angular library which you are creating. Then it should uh, have the proper uh, package structure. You can check it out it out at this link. I'll share it at the end or uh, in the resources. So uh, previously, uh, before the Angular uh, CLI six uh, uh, to package uh, or to create your own library, you have to do all that things manual or uh, like you have to trans uh, transpile your project or you have to uh, follow proper uh, structure Angular project structure. You have to create your uh, this. Uh, Type definitions files, which gives you like intelligence while you are using that library in any ID. You have to like uh, generate this metadata and inline templates. Generally, uh, whenever you are creating a library, that uh, in that library, uh, all the components should have uh, inline templates and inline style sheet, which is not uh, always possible to write for us, right? So, Angular uh, ng packager package is there which uh, we are using before Angular 6 uh, and th that uh, provide us features to do all that things. We doesn't have to do much things. We just need to execute the command which ng-packager gives us. So, uh, but after Angular 6, uh, ng-packager is integrated with the Angular CLI, uh, CLI so we doesn't uh, have to manually uh, insert it uh, in our project. When uh, we are creating a library project, it will be automatically inserted uh, in our applications. So uh, this is all about the theory, but now we'll come to a demo part and we'll develop it from the scratch. So when you are uh, thinking to develop your own library uh, from scratch, then uh, you uh, you can think this way that you will have one uh, empty application inside that you can uh, create one demo application as well as one library application because you have to also show a demo of that application and then at the time of development, uh, you can uh, uh, see the uh, what are the results you are getting for that uh, library so here i have already created uh, one sample application uh, so what we are going to build in this uh, uh, session or in this demo so we will be creating one rating uh, component ui component and we will be using uh, uh, like we'll see how to create it from scratch how you can create uh, library project as well as demo application and how you can uh, use it in the local uh, machine and uh, uh, file the development how you can test it okay and then uh, we'll uh, see uh, how we can publish it and uh, further if we have more time then i'll show you how you can uh, integrate this component with the reactive forms or uh, template driven forms so this will be a, like custom control custom form control so that we'll see uh, so before we start, uh, let me show you that uh, just what we are going to build. This, this is the library like I have created, and these things we are going to build from scratch. Okay, so let me stop this project, and then we can start. Uh, so uh, yeah. I have cre uh, already created one empty project using uh, this command. Uh, you can create new uh, empty project uh, without like uh, application using ng-new and then project name, your project name, and then you can just set here uh, create application false. So it will not create any application initially. Otherwise, it will create a default application there. Okay. So this is the empty project, and now in this uh, project or in this workspace, we'll create. Uh, uh, library project as well as uh, uh, our application, demo application. So basically it will follow the monorepo architecture if you have heard about. Uh, this will be a workspace and inside that there will be a two uh, project. Okay. So to create your li a new library from, uh, then you uh, will require- Hey Ankit, uh, sorry to interrupt you. Can you please yeah. increase the font size? Uh, sure. Yeah, even in your uh, Visual Studio code as well. Yeah, sure. The... Yeah. Thank you. Good sir. Font size. Okay. Let me know it is if it is visible. Correct. It is fine. Okay. 
hello yeah so uh, uh, yeah it's fine now okay yeah, yeah. Great. Okay, so uh, to create your library, you just need to execute this command. Uh, Angular CLI gives you a different generator, so you can write uh, ng generate, and then library, and then give your library name. So here we are creating a rating library. So I'll be writing like rating. Uh, and it will generate some uh, files for the library specific project uh, if you, uh, the way it is creating for the application project so until it uh, install all the packages let me show you what are the important files that library project will uh, include so uh, library project will have this main file uh, and also in this uh, package.json as i mentioned that uh, it is using ng packager internally uh, as you can see here, it adds this ng packager as in developer dependency. And also it adds uh, builders for building uh, that uh, library uh, package. So these are the pre uh, predefined builders in the Angular CLI. And then uh, that will give you uh, like the way we are building the normal Angular application using ng build. We can uh, generate uh, ng build and then library, which will generate the uh, Angular library project. Uh, or it will build the uh, library. So as you can see here, uh, this library, this rating library is of type library and that uh, build command will be used here. While in the uh, application, there will be a different builder that will be also doing. So this is the library which we have created and also we'll create a demo application parallel. So we can see how uh, we can uh, develop the library and as well as we can see the result of that uh, in the demo application. So here I'm creating a one demo application. So ng generate and then if you want to create an application then it will be ng generate application and then application name. So I, here I'll be writing a demo. So as you can see here uh, in the builders uh, for the demo application or for the application type project, uh, it will use the different uh, builders. While uh, for the library uh, project, it uses the ng packager builder. OK, so uh, in uh, library, uh, these are the important files like uh, in ngpacket.json, it is the important file where we mention the, uh, which is our public API. So that will be a, uh, it will just add the reference of that public API file. And <clears throat> in that public API file, we'll mention what are the things we want to uh, like uh, make publicly available. Suppose I am creating some component or module. What are the things I want to like uh, export it? And that can be uh, that only these things will be available to uh, when uh, I'll be using that library in any project. Uh, if there are some components I have created, but that uh, that I am not exporting from here, then that component you cannot be uh, used in the uh, uh, projects where you will import it. So if you are, you are creating a, uh, some uh, uh, more components, then you have to mention it here. Also, if you are creating uh, other services, then you have to mention it here. So it will come with uh, one service, one component, and one module. And inside the library, you can see here, this is the one, uh, the way it creates a normal uh, application component, app component, it creates one library component. And uh, here, it has already exported one rating, comp uh, the component which is uh, it has created, and we can use it inside the demo application. Okay. And services, if you are creating some services or creating a library for the service, then it is required. If it is not required, you can remove it later on. OK, so uh, these are the important files of library. Uh, and uh, and this readme file will be uh, like where you will put uh, your all the documentation for your library. When you are publishing your library on the NPM, the documentation which is written here, it will be visible to user. So that I'll show you. 
and also some uh, some of the important properties we need to mention it here while, while we are publishing our library that i'll show you so let's first design uh, library and uh, our component and then just check so before we start with the uh, library development first uh, you uh, should uh, like check whether you are able to import it uh, in some uh, other application or not and whether it is working fine or not so when you are uh, following this uh, monorepo architecture and uh, in uh, one workspace you are creating multiple application uh, and libraries then it uh, when you are creating a library it already uh, adds the path uh, in the tsconfig json so when you are building that library you doesn't require to like uh, execute the command npm install and then library name it will be directly available from the dist folder so you doesn't uh, so it is easy to use uh, while creating your library and creating the demo application uh, uh, application parallelly uh, if you want to use this uh, uh, library in the another application uh, or in another workspace then you have to execute the npm install and then dist folder command inside that you can just uh, zip uh, or pack your uh, complete files using npm pack command so here uh let's first check whether our library is working fine or not so for that we will uh, like build the library as well as we'll use it in the, the ngserve also whenever you are doing some changes in the, your library uh, then you have to rebuild it again and then it will be available to a component so for uh, in the other application so for that uh, what i'll do i'll run uh, my uh, library uh, i'll build command in the watch mode so whenever i'm doing some changes uh, inside that uh, library that will be uh, reflected it will rebuild uh, that uh, uh, library and it will be available to my application so here i can uh, like run ng build and then library name you have to mention it like dash dash project or you can just directly write that library name because here uh, we have multiple projects we have to mention it otherwise uh, you can just write ng build if it is only a library project also here uh, so as you can see it will build a library and it will be available in dist folder once it is done so as you can see it generates uh, this bundle files umd bundle files esm fasm and then this type definition files so which will give you a type intelligence while you are using that uh, library in uh, any application okay and this bundle files will be used based on the platform where you are using this library so and this all things will be done by uh, the, this just command which internally uses the ng, uh, uh, ng packager so our library uh, bundle is done and then we can use it in our application as i mentioned that uh, uh, already we uh, that angular adds this path uh, so we doesn't require to uh, execute npm install in our application it will be uh, directly available from this path so when we'll be using rating then it will search in the dist and in the inside the rating so here parallelly i'll be running uh, i'll be serving my application so ng serve and then uh, uh, we also need to require to serve it in a watch mode because uh, what will happen if you are serving uh, without the watch mode then uh, uh, when these files are got changed or when you are uh, rebuilding your library your application will uh, not be able to find the this rating of files so it will just stop uh, in between it will show you an error so i'll start it in a watch mode
it will be uh, running on the localhost 4200 let me just start yeah it is up and then we can check it here uh, okay so empty project is there and then let's check uh, uh let's use uh, that rating library inside our project we have we haven't run uh added uh, any other uh, things inside the rating library we just want to check whether it works or whether we are able to use it uh, inside the demo application once that is done we'll uh, develop our logic inside the rating uh library so here uh, inside the app module i'll use rating module and as you can see it is available from the disk and then i can use just rating module and here and inside the app component let me remove all things and just let me use rating so it is uh, generally if you are not providing any prefix while creating your library then it will be a lib lib and then it will be a library name then you can check it here and yeah you can check your, you are getting the content from your library component uh, from here and let's check whether it works when uh, i'm updating uh, the content of library so okay so Okay. Uh, it th okay sorry i just missed to write it here in a watch mode so we have to rebuild it and uh, again i'll write it in a watch mode so uh, so whenever there are some uh, changes that occur it uh, it will not stop working uh, after that uh, creating the library it will watch for the files uh, changes and if i'm doing some changes it will reflect that on the screen uh, it will rebuild the library and that will be available to our application As I said, uh, if you will be building a library, then it will, uh, because it is using your library code uh, from the dist folder, it got crashed. So at, uh, that's why we should run both in the watch mode and then you can develop your library parallel. It will be a reflecting on the application. Yeah, you can see here, now our, uh, library changes are ready and available. And also it is now, watching for the file changes. So whenever I will be doing some changes, like, uh, it will rebuild it. Uh, and just so, and then demo, and then watch. Okay, and let's check it. Yeah. Uh, let me just connect my charger. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now let's check whether it updates the content or not. So as you can see, it rebuilds it and it uh, again uh, reflect the changes. It is available now. So this way you can uh, build your library that uh, you can uh, make the changes in your library and that will be reflected on the uh, uh, application. So you can test it parallelly. So let's uh, build our uh, logic for creating component. So uh, I have created some snippets for uh, from that previous library which I have shown so that I uh, doesn't require to write all that things. So here uh, my initial template is like Okay. and uh, here we'll be using ng class uh, so we will require to use a common module inside uh, our library module so inside the rating module we need to import the common module once it is available it will not show an error and as you can see yeah 
also uh, the icons which i'll be showing that is of uh, that is a part of the font awesome so we need to add the font awesome library uh, here i'll be using just css cdn link inside the index.html of uh, my demo application and so that uh, you can use any icons uh, which you have created uh, and you can provide that class only here so here uh, This is the font awesome uh, CDN I'm using. Also, I'm adding bootstrap that I'll show you. Uh, so as you can see, it is the simple template uh, inside this library. And here just we are showing this single icon. But here what we want to uh, do is we want to uh, like uh, show the number of ratings and uh, uh, what are the num uh, ratings we have set. We want to show that many stars. Okay, and user can select any rating and then you can just uh, pass it to a, uh, its a parent component or in app component. So that type of component we are building here. So here uh, we have list time. So let me just add the snippets uh, or uh, let me just try. So here, what we'll do, we'll just uh, get the rating from the, uh, we'll get the maximum rating. So default, we'll put it as a like maximum five rating user can set. So max rating will be five and also the user can set the already selected rating so that will be a rating here and we have to like uh, add the looping here using ng4 right so for that i'll be like creating a range and in that range will have will have one two three four five uh that way so range array i'll be creating here this will be just number array and then I'll be just writing. So this range will be initialized with, uh, we'll be generating a numbers only here. Uh, these statements will generate uh, just one, two, three, four, five, and it will add it. So this is the simple thing. And then we can just add it, uh, use it as an ng4. So these are the some of the extensions I I am using to like uh, writing that code faster. And here you can add the range and R. Range of uh, yeah, we need to call it inside this. So we need to update the range. Yeah, you can see here we are able to now generate the. Uh, five stars but here what is our requirement we want initially want to show the empty stars and when user selects the if we want to fill it okay so for that we require two icons right and that we'll do by writing uh, rating icons and inside the rating icon suppose one icon is for filled fa f star and another icon is for empty then fa f star these are the just uh, icon names uh, if in the font awesome you can also use other icons okay. and we want to uh, do it logically like if user has selected if user has given two rating then it should fill only two uh, stars not all the stars okay so that thing we'll do here and then that we can do programmatically using ng class like if our uh, rating is less than r then we'll uh, rating dot uh, rating icons dot fill otherwise rating icons dot empty oh, we just condition is wrong okay empty and fill So suppose I'm changing rating to a five or three, it should reflect it here. Now let's make it clickable and uh, let uh, add some style uh, so that it show like when I'm hovering it here. So I will add some styles which I have created already. So uh, component CSS and it gives some effect like I'm hovering it here. So now my task is to like uh, click on that and then update the rating. Okay, so 
that thing uh, for that will create one method update rating and we'll get rating from user once user click there and then we'll update the rating this dot rating is equal to also i want to pass that rating change uh, onto a parent component right we want to handle that uh, wherever we are using this component so for that i'll be creating one output event and then it will be a like creating change and using new event emitter it will be a type of number so whenever i am doing some changes it should like trigger rating change so while you are creating a library then you should take a like what are the events you want to trigger and what are the uh, properties you want to get from the uh, a, a developer or a user who is using that library so rating change dot emit and then it is we are triggering rating and also we have to add it in the click of i Here it will be update rating and it will be a R. So you can check it here. Yeah, we are able to make it. And now we will trigger it. This is just a normal input output property. So this is not a big deal uh, if you have used Angular already. Uh, and uh, inside that component, we'll use it. Uh, so here I'm passing rating from the client uh, or uh, inside my app component. Suppose initially it is a one and then on rating change. Okay, and inside here we'll handle that event. So rating will pass it from here as well as we'll handle the rating change event. Rating change and just, okay, just and as you can see here, we are able to get the ratings. Now, uh, I just want to add some more fun uh, features and then we'll publish it to a npm. So, let's add some features here. Uh, rating component inside that uh, suppose i want to show initially uh, uh, the message like if user uh, has a one rate star then it will be a poor and if it is a like two or three it is a uh, average and then if it is a like four star it is good and then that way i want to add some logic so that uh, let's add quickly and then we'll move ahead so here uh, what i'll do uh, i'm uh, creating some uh, like rating type i'll calculate the rating type based on the rating and then uh, and we'll uh, show the message so here i'm just creating one num so rating type so it will have poor average good and amazing rating type okay and uh, we'll calculate it so So here, my logic is, and I'll just add one variable here, rating type of type rating. So what is my current uh, rating type that I'll be calculating whenever uh, my rating got changed. So here, the simple logic I have written is like, uh, if the percentage of rating is less than or equal to 25, then it will be a poor. If it is less than or equal to 60, then it will be average. And if it is less than or equal to 80%, it is good and then over there it is amazing so that way i'll just written sim a uh, simple logic you can write it based on your requirements so now uh, here i want to add different colors for that right then i should have like se separate map for each rating type so that will create and we can get the configuration for the same also from the user so for that i'll mark it as an input uh, property and uh, here uh, like 
I have a lip. This is object I am creating. So these are the just some snippets I have created so that we can uh, complete this demo quickly. So these are the like for poor I am setting red and for average it I am setting orange and good. Uh, for good it is green, yellow, and then green. Okay. So initially we'll uh, when we are updating the range as well as we'll calculate the rating type. So initially whatever rating type will be there, we want to show the color here, right? So for that we have to use it. Uh, in this like we have to programmatically assign the color so that we can do using uh, colors and we have already set the rating type so that we'll get from rating type and then you can check it here whether it is working or not yeah okay rating type is the colors rating type Okay, uh, one more thing we need to do uh, when we are updating the rating, then also we need to calculate it again, right? So that we'll do it here and then we check. Yeah, you can see now it is giving different colors for different ratings. Also, I want to show some messages here, right? So that we can do by the same way. We can add the messages uh, and then Or suppose poor it is a poor and average and then we can customize for that uh, that's why i'm putting it as an input property so user can customize that thing also and then we have to uh, at this message place from rating messages and then insert rating type Yeah, so our uh, library is almost ready and then uh, you can add more features like uh, uh, you can uh, allow user to add the uh, different font size and all that for that you have to also add the input property so whatever configuration you will require that you can get from the user so here one more thing is that uh, we are getting the uh, configuration from the user but uh, using input property but suppose you are using a service or if you are uh, passing some configuration in the for root then at that time that thing should work right so here i'll show you how we can get the configuration from user inside the for root and we can assign it as a dependency okay so uh, Generally, in the service, uh, or uh, if you are creating a library for the service, then you, you will require that uh, configuration inside. Uh, uh, if you want to configure something, then that uh, uh, services doesn't have any uh, input properties, right? Uh, for components, we can pass it as an input property, but for the services, we have to inject some dependencies or we have to provide configuration some way. So in that case, you can use the configuration. So here I'll show you how we can pass configuration inside the while we are using a, a model dot for root. So for that, I'm just creating one config object. Uh, you need to create it uh, for your library. If uh, so, here uh, I'll leave config. And I'm creating this way. Like I want to get the configuration for the uh, colors or rating message or rating icons. Just let's do for the rating icons for now. So this class I'll be creating, and inside the for root, uh, inside the, my rating module or your library module, you have to create the static for root method. Okay. So it will be a, like static for root, and inside that you will pass the configuration. Okay, so configuration uh, variable or it will be a null. Either it can be anything. And then uh, here uh, it will be a rating config. Type of it will be a rating config. Uh, let me export it if I haven't done that inside the rating component. Yeah, I would turn it inside the rating module rating config and then it will be a it will return the module with providers so for that i have also created some snippet so you doesn't require to remember all that things so 
here first okay the structure will be like this uh, the configuration which you are providing here so it will be a rating config and the model which you will uh, you are providing the configuration in so you will uh, you are returning a model with the providers already so you are configuring that so here i'm writing rating model and it will it is the model with the providers so yeah rating model and i have to import it and then i'm providing a rating config right So this way I'm providing it and now I can use inside the service or inside my rating component, right? So here, when I'm using it uh, here and I'm not passing for root uh, uh, from the application, then uh, it will give you an error because you are not providing a, uh, you are not providing a configuration. So how you can tackle with that because sometimes what happens user want to just work with the default configuration he doesn't want to change the configuration with the for root. so at that time it should also work right so i'll show you an error what error it will go and how we can handle it so i'm getting some configuration from the user okay uh, it is a rating config and then inside the configuration let's check it uh, let's try to execute it just print it console.log this dot config okay and then uh, pass uh, let's check uh, you can see here uh, we are getting an error like it is not uh, able to find the rating configuration uh, from the injector right because we haven't executed that for root method and uh, because of for root method is not executed, it uh, we, uh, we haven't uh, provided any rating configuration. So uh, as you can see here, we are providing rating configuration inside the for root only. So for that, uh, if you want to, uh, your user should work also, uh, your library should work also with the default configuration, then you can provide it as an optional here. And that will work with if user is not providing the configuration, it will work. Right? And now let's see how we can consume the configuration which will provide it from the application. So inside our app module, we'll provide the configuration using for root. For root is the inside the rating module right we have a static for inside app module and then let's try to provide rating icons yeah sometimes id will like uh, not show proper so yeah it is working but it is showing error uh, because uh, that it uh, doesn't able to like come uh, refresh all its uh, intelligence or markdown so that's why but as you can see here uh, we are uh, getting an error because of we are not we haven't passed anything inside the rating icons so that will pass it here field is there that i want to show uh, uh, set some different icon then i can suppose f a f a heart then let me change another icon empty and then ffa heart oh yeah you can see here we are not getting error in the compilation so that means uh, we doesn't have any error inside the code but our id is still is not reflected sometimes uh, when you will restart the id that will work properly so as you can see here now we are able to get the configuration inside this rating component inside our library right so we'll use this configuration here inside the rating component. I'll use it like I want to change the rating icons from this config. Rating icons.
you can see here now our icons got changed this way we can also provide the configuration for the colors as well as uh, other properties uh, as per your requirement you can provide the configuration uh, on, inside the for root as well as using the input properties so this is the one way i show it uh, and while using that thing you just have to put it inside uh, if you have that property only then update it otherwise you will work with the default configuration okay so now uh, inside uh, our app module we'll reset it to a previous one and then we'll go ahead with the normal uh, stars right so our library is ready and we are uh, ready to publish it uh, also, as you can see, uh, you will be getting such kind of error, but that is not an error because uh, your ID, uh, that this ID is not able to uh, get this uh, properly. Otherwise, uh, if it is an error, it will show in the compilation only. Now, our library is ready and we can publish it to uh, an NPM because uh, it is working fine. Some of the features I'll show you uh, if we have time. Uh, but before that, let's see how we can publish it to NPM. So while you are publishing uh, it to NPM, we have seen how we, to test it in a local uh, environment in the demo application. And then while you are creating your library, what are the things you should take care of? Right. Uh, OK. So uh, these are the things you should mention inside the documentation because if you are creating some open source project, then uh, it should uh, have these details. Like it should have features, installation steps, uh, steps to use it uh, inside uh, any application. What are the configuration you can do with that library? What are the, what is the demo URL if you have created, uh, and what is the conf uh, contribution guideline if you want some other uh, developers. Uh, can work uh, on this project, then you can add the con uh, contribution guideline so that other users can check that contribution guideline and then uh, contribute it uh, inside your uh, in your library. So this is not any standard format, but these are the just uh, recommended things which you should uh, mention inside your documentation. And also, uh, while uh, publishing your library on the NPM, then you should mention these fields like repository URL, author, and contributors details, license, version number, then bugs URL, uh, because uh, bugs will be from the Git. Uh, you, uh, user can uh, post or uh, add uh, issue in your Git repository, right? So that will be a URL, homepage URL, if you have separate uh, page or separate uh, site for documentation of your library, then what are the keywords you can mention? And peer dependencies. Peer dependencies will be uh, like uh, compatibility dependencies uh, with which your library works in. So that will be a default comp when you will uh, create a library inside the packet.json. So inside. And you have to mention all the things inside your library packet.json. So that things will be available here. And uh, whenever we are publishing it here, we have to change the version number. I'll show you. Uh, I'll tell you like which uh, version number you should change. So we will use here a semantic versioning. Uh, so let me just copy uh, these things. Or Or let me just show you uh, without uh, that configuration how it will look inside uh, uh, the npm and after providing that configuration what make changes it will make so inside the readme.md this will be the configuration file which will be visible on uh, on the npm js uh, and you will search your library so here uh, i'll just add one tag like rating library and for you can provide all the documentation i'm just writing two lines here and later on we can uh, just get some content from uh, other uh, application and we'll add it and i'll show you that how it will get reflected there okay so here uh, you can see rating we have updated uh, and then 
I'm just closing it and then what are the steps to publish it? So if you have not created uh, npm JS account before, or if you have not published any library before, then just create npm JS account here. I have already created one up, uh, account. So, and then you have to log in it here. So using npm login, you can log in it. And once you are logging, you can verify whether you are successfully logging or not using VMI, npm VMI, and then it will show you that username with whom I'm logged in okay now uh, to publish that library i have to create a production build of that library and uh, one thing uh, is not uh, you need to take uh, note here that uh, for now uh, we are not building the library with the uh, iv compiler yeah we are generating library with the view engine only for now because iv is not uh, backward compatible yet the libraries which we are building in with iv that is not backward compatible so for now we are building it uh, with uh, iv flag false inside the production so if you'll check it here inside your library uh, inside that uh, in library project uh, not in this one yeah, TS config lib. Yeah, here it will be set like enable IV false. It will be a false. So it will generate uh, your production build inside the view engine uh, compiler. And uh, once uh, uh, you are using that library in any IV supported uh, application, then it will automatically convert that uh, uh, package into IV supported uh, files. So using ng uh, cc, uh, using ng compatibility compiler. So here. Uh, what are the steps to build your library? Uh, you can do this using uh, just ng build dash dash prod and here your project name. So I'll be doing this rating. Okay. And also one thing you should uh, mention inside your packet.json. So because uh, if uh, uh, the library name which you are specifying is already exist uh, uh, with the uh, 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 which already exists then you will not be able to publish that library so uh, if that thing is then you want to like uh, create your uh, library for with your scope only with your username only the way there is like at the rate angular and then slash the library name the way you can also create with the, your username at the rate your username and then slash the library name so that you have to mention inside the name inside the rating lib packet.json so here I'll be doing it ng develop and inside that I'll be publishing it. So ng build rating and then I'm creating a production build for the same. Once production build is done, I just need to execute the npm publish command to publish it to a npm. You can check it here. Uh, for now I have five packages and then you can see once that is uploaded. Okay, so this folder is ready with this package name ng build rating, and you can check it here ng build rating. Okay, because we are uh, publishing our first version, then we uh, we are mentioning it as a 0 .0 0.0.1. But if you are releasing your stable version, then it should be a, like 1.0.0. That will be a starting version, and also follow semantic versioning. In semantic versioning, when you are doing some patches with your library or uh, you are fixing some bugs then you have to update this last dot zero the, that this is the patch number and this is the minor changes so it is like major dot minor that patch kind of version uh, system so if you are uh, doing some changes uh, or adding some features which is backward compatible then you can just update this number or increment this number and when you are doing some major changes which is uh, like uh, not backward compatible and it is major change, then you just have to update this number like major version number okay so for now i'll be publishing it with the 0 0.0.1 and that number should be a unique because if you have already published the 0.0.1 and try to publish it again, then it will give you an error. Now our bundle is ready and then we can just publish it using npm publish and then the folder in which my bundle is generated. So here it will be a disk and inside that it will be a rating. 
and then when you are uh, publishing your scope package okay this is the scope package or scope library for my ng developer scope okay so at that time you have to also specify the access uh, as a public and for the organization uh, for the paid account you can create the private packages but for uh, if you are creating uh, N uh, npm public account then uh, you can just create the public libraries here so i'll keep access as a public and you can check it here it has generated uh, this tgz file and then it has published it and it will be reflected in one or two minutes inside the npm and you can use it wherever you require that library It just take one or two minutes to publish uh, or reflect that changes inside the packages. Until that thing is done, let's add some more documentation and uh, the properties which I am saying you that you should mention it here. But I just want to show that how it reflects with previous one. Uh, hey, Ankit, in the meantime, you want to go through the questions? Yeah, before sure, you, sure. Before waiting? Yeah, sure. We can. Yeah. So this is a question from Vignesh. Fees are of Narval NX. My understanding is we can use monoropen angles. Yeah, uh, Narval uh, provides some more features. Like if you want to like create a projects with React, Vue.js, or Angular, and uh, you want to combine that things. Also, Narval uh, handles uh, other uh, testing tools like Cypress and all. So Narval is a uh, like. Uh, uh, provides all this handling and uh, you can manage it before angular cli uh, providing this workspaces narrow was providing that things monorepo architecture and it uh, gives you more tools and uh, to handle such kind of projects okay so next question from sagar if you are libraries using I will. Yeah, yeah, Sagar. When you are building the library uh, uh, and you are publishing it to npm, you just uh, you just need to mention that flag enable IV false with the prod, uh, and you doesn't require to mention it, but directly uh, when you are creating a project, Angular CLI uh, set that flag. So here inside the prod tsconfiglib dot prod, it comes with this enable IV. So you doesn't require to do anything. You just need to build it with the prod, and you just need to publish it. It will uh, create the bundle with the view engine only. Okay. So this is a second question. Mm -hmm. uh, company logo is common to display. Monorepo that change logo gets separated for both end. Uh, Goro, if you want to implement such kind of functionality with the different frameworks like uh, Angular and React or Vue, then you have to create it as an Angular element. So that creates a web component and that you can use in even normal, simple HTML, CSS application also. Directly, uh, that Angular library will not work with the React. So for that, you have to create Angular element. OK. OK. And uh, another question from Sagar. Hmm. Where is the font or some yeah. library included? Yeah, Sagar, that uh, font or some CDN I have included inside the demo application only because uh, that library is not dependent on any icons. Uh, we can just set uh, whatever icons we want to show uh, inside uh, our uh, application and then we can just assign the class here. Uh, in library, you can uh, add the uh, like uh, normal uh, uh, SVG files or you can just create uh, classes. There. But for uh, demonstrating purpose, I have just added inside the uh, demo application. So all the classes will be available to that library also. OK. I think that's all we have, uh, Ankit. So yeah. OK. 
can you check now whether it got published i think it should be yeah yeah it should be uh, it just took one or two minutes well mm -hmm. doing that so you can see here it is available ng develop and rating and we have published it five minute back and uh, you can see here that we are not getting more details here so i'll show you what are the details you should mention it here so that whenever user is coming to your page or your library page, it uh, he, sh uh, he or she should get the proper documentation and uh, like repose it to your home page URLs that I'll show you. So inside, uh, let's first add a documentation here. Uh, let me just pop it from here. This is the some documentation you can add. So just add all the features and all, all the configuration details, uh, which I have mentioned in that uh, slide. You should add that thing, uh, add that things. And it is not any standard, but uh, these are the recommended things. So that user uh, or developer when come to your page or your library, he just get to know that what are the features he can use with your library. And inside the package.json here, we can add more details. So not in package.json of list folder, package.json of package project rating. These are the things you should mention here. So your uh, if you are a single author, then you can edit, uh, edit this way. Or if you have multiple contributors, then you can write it using the contributors array. You can specify it here or uh, if you are using MIT license or which license you are using, you can add it here. If you are using multiple licenses, then you can put the array. Also the bugs URL, that will be uh, your repository issue URL. Uh, so here, let me just copy with my, or we can commit it uh, on the GitHub and then I can show you the thing. And we'll commit at, uh, it with the uh, demo application as well as uh, library. So whenever user coming to your uh, repository, he should get like sample application as well as the library details. So inside the GitHub, I'll just create new repository. This is the Angular Rating Lib. Description I'm not adding, just quickly to this. And just here. Debug log is not required. Okay. And then push the changes here. Yeah. And then just get this URL from here. As you can see, we are getting the content. And the documentation which you have provided for the library, that will be in the library readme file. So you also have to provide more documentation or just uh, initial description about your library in the main page, inside your main repository readme file. So that will be helpful to uh, your users. As you can see here, we are getting the documentation details here. And inside this issue URL, we'll mention it uh, inside the library. So here, the bugs URL. You can also add the email if, uh, so when your user is adding any, uh, like he want to rep uh, report uh, any issue, then he can just come to your email. But I'm not adding that email here, I just add the URL. And repository URL will copy. Uh, and if uh, you have a, uh, any like different website for providing a documentation, then you can add it here. I'm just writing uh, for now the this repository URL, and then 
inside you can add the keywords whatever you want to write there. so this is the angular and rating library these are the things and then just rebuild your application and publish it again and it will be available uh, and uh, as i mentioned we have to update the version number you can update uh, and you can add it inside the script uh, by just uh, use uh, executing npm uh, version and then patch or minor or major so inside uh, our uh, projects and uh, rating just we'll execute npm version and then uh, i'm just want to do like i'm if it is a stable application you can just change it as a major it will change all things here as you can see it is now set to 1.0.0 so you doesn't have required to manually uh, change that thing uh, you can just write it inside the script that uh, first command you want to execute is npm version and then major minor or patch and then in the end and you can just write the command to build your application so i'll just build it again npm build this Fitting test test product. Fitting lib npm. Oh, sorry, ng build. And then just our bundle is ready, and we can just directly publish it. So it will be uh, the same command, npm publish, and then uh, rating. Uh, it is this rating and uh, access public. And you can see here, uh, it is publi uh, published as a rating at 1.0.0. And that will be reflected in like, one or two minutes here. Yeah. Yeah. You can see here we are getting all the documentation here and then this license detail version number, then this home page repository URL and issue. Issue will be a, a link is that when you will be clicking on the issue, it will redirect to your issue page. okay so that is all we have in this session uh if you want like uh okay, do we have uh, more time or uh, it is the, if we uh, you uh, like if you want to like uh, do, see the things like how we can uh, create it, use it it as an like custom control form control inside uh, angular reactive forms or uh, inside template driven forms then i'll show you uh, if required otherwise we can just wrap it up. Uh, no, is, is that part of your? Uh, uh, no, it that, is not a part of the demo. Demo? No, no, no. demo. All right. Yeah. Okay. So actually, we are uh, running a little bit. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we can have it as a separate session. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So. So yeah, this is one library I have created previously, and just fancy logger. Yeah. You, and uh, this is Angular console logging utility. You can use it uh, in uh, in your application, and uh, like it provides of some features like environment specific configuration for your logs and log levels and all that things. You can check it out. Uh, yeah, oh, that's cool. Just let me know uh, if you find it useful. And yeah, that's all from my side. Now let me yeah. know if you have any questions. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there are a couple questions, but it's kind of a conversation going on uh, between participants. Like if you take a look and if you have any inputs for those questions, so that would be great. Sure, sure. Yeah, NGC so you can take care. It is a compatibility compiler which converts IV, uh, view engine uh, libraries to IV when you are using it inside the IV. For a review to lazy loading, didn't get uh, if it is. Uh, my demo happened. I 
I don't find any specific. Yeah, yeah, effect. that's what. Yeah, yeah. So more more of related to IV. Yeah, I think you answered that already, right? Yeah. Yep. So thank you so much, uh, Ankit, for your uh, you. time and sp spending with us in discussing how to create Angular library and pushing it to npm. And uh, yeah. So you you have anything uh, to uh, pass on? Before we yeah. wind up. Yeah, sure. Uh, so while you are creating your library, just make sure that you are creating for that uh, feature only. Just don't uh, combine multiple features. And uh, also, while you are creating libraries, just provide proper documentation if you are creating mm -hmm. some open source project so that user can uh, use it properly and also add the, some contribution guidelines so that he can check the contribution guideline and then contribute it in, uh, inside your uh, library. So that will be uh, like you can try it and uh, just uh, you can uh, uh, if you have any idea then you can publish it. Uh, some uh, sometimes what happened the normal idea is like uh, used many times. Like yeah. I have seen some libraries which is a uh, simple but it used like uh, fifty thousand or ten thousand uh, downloads per week. So that kind of library you can create and for your organization you can also like if you do not want to publish it on the npm you can just uh, create it uh, uh, inside your platform and use it for your organization only the way you we use it in a local environment yep so, as a monorepo architecture you can also use it uh, yeah so we can uh, create libraries as ankit said and we can have it within our organization like you can yeah post it in your uh, local repository, like JFrog or something, because it, it supports NPM again. Yeah. So you don't have to make it public again. Yeah. And Ankit, one last question from uh, Kishore. Hmm. Yeah, I, I just put it on stream. OK, uh, so with libraries like MomentJS going out of the scope with devs because of size, what can we do better to reduce the bundle size? OK. so. If you want to use MomentJS only, then there are different alternatives, as Google has also mentioned in uh, is uh, like that page speed blog, I think. Uh, when you are uh, doing the uh, speed, uh, page speed test uh, for any site, then it shows there the way. So uh, there are some alternatives. But if you want to go stick with the MomentJS, then either you can just copy the, uh, you doesn't require whole library, then you can just copy the functions only. That is not, I'm um, just saying, just that is what I thought that we can just copy some functions. But Moment is, is a, like very big and uh, it provides so many functionalities. So it is like based on your use case, you can uh, use it, uh, whether some other library is providing that features or not, or if it is mandatory to use Moment Yeah. OK, so there is one more question. What is the plugin you are using for uh, quick code generation? Yeah, uh, some the bootstrap plugins I have, like bootstrap for and uh, material design plugin, but that the plugins which I am uh, using for the creating uh, this application that I have created by my own, uh, you can create the snippets inside the VS Code. It It is easy to create a snippet inside VS Code. You just uh, have to write one dot uh, user snippets file inside or you will just when select the code and just search inside the command that uh, user snippet it will create one file and then you can write your snippets there mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you and uh ankit you can go through the questions and if there are any just you can reach out to the yeah, participants sure. on uh, comments yeah so uh, for this library it's like uh for one thing you should take care is like whenever you are creating a library, you should be a tree shakeable. Suppose you are creating some services and you are using that service inside the module, that will not be a tree shakeable, right? Uh, so it should be a tree shakeable. You have to provide uh, like provided in root or provided in any or anything inside that injectable. If you will provide it, it uh, inside the module, then it will not be a tree shakeable. So that thing you can take care. Also, uh, for uh, reducing bundle size, uh, if you think, then like uh, 
separate out your features suppose the way like uh, material design or material angular material library or ngx bootstraps are doing they are building their each component in separate library or they are building in separate module so you can use directly that module only inside one module they are not creating more components so that way that mod uh, the modules which you are using that will only be used uh, inside uh, your application and it will consume only that uh, size not the complete library size so design your library that way yeah that is my take on on kishore okay yeah, yeah. thanks ankit and uh, uh let's let's see we can have a different uh, session in future yeah. like after sure. two or three months yeah thanks uday yeah. yeah thank you so much yeah have a great rest of the day yeah thank you thanks so everyone yeah. have a good day. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, hope you had a wonderful session and also quiz. Uh, okay, before we wind up, uh, I have a couple of announcements to make. Uh, I, I won't take more than uh, two minutes. Okay. So, so when possible, take a look at uh, uh, this community, Talklify community. So they are our uh, friends uh, who, who are who are conducting uh, meetups on Microsoft technologies and Angular. So uh, if possible, join and support them as well. OK. And uh, for today's session, please provide feedback uh, using this link, uh, bit.ly ng sep feedback. OK. I'm trying to share this link on uh, a YouTube command, but it's not allowing. So just go and uh, type this URL and provide your feedback. So that's very important for us to uh, I mean, keep providing more sessions in future. So just in case, if you have any questions or if you want to contribute to our community, reach out to me on Twitter. And uh, yeah, so as I said, please share your feedback here, so which is very important, right? So we are we are thinking to uh, have sessions in future in, in different formats. So we are getting more feedback from the users. So your feedback is very important in that case. Okay, and also uh, we, we have sessions coming up in next month. So we we found we found uh, one speaker, uh, but we are yet to find another speaker. So once we finalize the uh, talk and uh, who is going to speak on the event, uh, we will publish event. So keep watching for events, and uh, just make sure you join our meetup group so that you will not miss any of our future events. Okay. So if you have anything to share uh, in particular, uh, or if you want to contact me, uh, you, you can just reach out to me on uh, our Twitter. So you can find me at the handle at askudai on Twitter. So you can just DM me just in case if you want to say hi. OK. That's all uh, we have. Uh, anything else before we wind up? Yeah, I, I'll just put that link on uh, banner once again so that you will not miss the feedback. And if you have anything to share, you can share it on Twitter as well, or you can put it on YouTube live comments as well. Okay. So thanks, uh, everyone. And thanks to our speakers as well. And I uh, hope you have a wonderful weekend. Okay. I'm just ending the broadcast. So take care, everyone. Stay safe.